My name is Isaac Edminster. I am a double major in biochemistry and computer science, and I am a senior at George Fox University. Oh, yeah. Um, my name is Andy Wang, but on paper, you call me Zunyan Wang, which is my, my name on the ID or on the official paperwork. But uh, I'm a senior in George Fox University. What inspired me was really the ability to uh, branch out and connect with uh, a lot of different people throughout the area, especially in prosthetic design, helping us to build our network and uh, make connections to really just grow uh, in our product development. So the project began as a servant engineering project here at George Fox, which is all about finding a need in the community and working to fill that need. So as we transitioned into um, the possibility of working with Invent Organ, uh, we were able to really focus on what we needed in our project. And what we needed was to make connections and to build our network to better our project. Um, additionally, our project started out with a budget of $180 throughout an eight month period. And so having the additional 500 and then $2,000 on top of that through Invent Organ really helped us build our uh, possibilities for growth. I think what I've discovered about myself is um, a passion in an area I didn't expect. Uh, working with prosthetic design and prosthetics in general is, isn't an area I've, I've really focused on in my uh, education career thus far. And so, being able to see how these prosthetics work, these biosensors work, really gave me a, a newfound appreciation and love for these biomedical designs that I had never had. Yes, George Fox has been uh, integral in our development process uh, through our advisor, Dr. Abraham Kang, uh, just helping us along every step of the way um, to working in the labs, being able to use the labs, uh, working with different professors and uh, technicians here at George Fox helping us print out 3D printing models, uh, learning different design tools, and really just working with us every step of the way that anytime we've needed help. The biggest challenge we faced was definitely a technical challenge in learning how to mitigate crosstalk between muscle groups. Uh, so learning how to really just isolate different muscle signals with our biosensor. Uh, on the complete other side, uh, another problem we've faced is uh, on the marketing side, as we've learned, we're both computer science yeah, majors, it's very difficult. how we've learned to really increase marketing and learn more about entrepreneurship. Yeah, and also another thing is uh, when we started up, we jumping on this project is we thought this is, you know, this is a really cool project and, um, and, and we just want to make something out of it. But like, but then we go into Inventor Oregon, we re realize that, you know, you know, this is cool product, but we lost the direction. Like we don't know what direction, what exactly, you know, this, so this current sensor we're building, it has lots and lots of applications, in the real life, uh, and, but each is a little bit different. We don't know which will be the best uh, direction we're going with work product. So I think that's one of the biggest challenge that we have faced and we, didn't really overcome until recently, but yet we still struggle it a little bit, but we now have at least a very general direct direction for the heading to, which is absolutely amazing. We are a biomedical engineering team, um, neither of which of us are biomedical <laughs> engineers, um, but we're working to solve the problem of high cost biosensors and prosthetics. So, specifically in pattern recognition tools. Um, a lot of prosthetics nowadays are what's used of more of a binary sensor, so it's, it's a simple open-close, whereas the future of prosthetics more lies in pattern recognition tools, uh, which is a, a sensor that goes fully around the arm rather than just being two nodes, and it can recognize different specific muscle signals of opening your hand, closing your hand, but also movement of the hand and um, different things like that. And so the problem is those current pattern recognition sensors are either inefficient and outdated or $20,000.
And so we're really trying to find that middle ground of being an efficient, accurate sensor while still being accessible to an everyday person. Both on the research side of prosthetics through universities and through the actual uh, creators of prosthetics through prosthetic manufacturers and companies. So in both of those areas, in the research side, we hope that our product would is able to move forward really the forefront of prosthetics and make pattern recognition more accessible to everyone, yeah. which is going to make uh, more complex prosthetic devices yeah. more accessible and more common. Mm -hmm. While as on the manufacturing side, again, if we can reduce that cost, we can make that more accessible to everyone on the market. Uh, and I to expand a little bit on, on what he said. Uh, another thing is we talk to a, a person in the industry. The reason is currently in the industry that a pattern recognition which you can move the, the, the type of prosthetic arm that you can move every, every single finger. These things are extremely expensive. So they're cost somewhere around $67 to $87. Most of the people who lost their limbs, they would just look at this now. Nah, I'm just gonna get some something, you know, a little bit cheaper and more reliable version. But what we are aiming to do is we're gonna make these type of prosthetic hand more accessible to, to, to people who lost their limbs. So it's make it a lot of cheaper. So the insurance company will actually willing to coverage this kind of arm for them. They will actually at least try it on, have the chance to, you know, maybe think, oh, I, I can get this instead of uh, a cheap, uh, a, a little slightly worse one. So we'd like to make this more accessible to consumers.